We had Judy on the line. We have seen her in the Bad Girls Club, Season 7, <laughs> New Orleans. Hey, everybody. It's her <laughs> Love Games. And when she won in Bad Girls Club Redemption. Yes. Now, you took your reality star platform and created a fiction brand. You started in a movie. You're a best-selling author. So, um, yes. your book came out this year, a couple months ago. It's called To Death yes, the Worst Part. My first book. Yeah. <laughs> So how did you get into this book production? Like, how did this develop? Well, a lot of my fans, if y'all don't know, um, my mother recently died from lung cancer in March. Mm-hmm. My dad had passed away two months prior. It was really, really back to back, and it was crazy. I'm an only child, so it was just so much that was going through my mind at the time that for once in my life, and I use social media for everything, for once in my life, I did not see what I was going through. Like, I didn't want people to see me, like, I'm sorry, like, my parents are with you, like, all types of stuff, because I just wasn't ready to hear that type of stuff. Yeah. So instead, I picked up a journal, and I started writing. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a story. Like, you know, a fiction story. But the thing is, in my book, it has a lot of imagery of my parents. For instance, my dad drove a, uh, a white Cadillac. I mentioned it in my book. My mother's essay about her perfume. Stuff like that. And I ultimately dedicated the book to lung cancer awareness. So all the proceeds go directly to lung cancer, which is what my mom lost her life. So I wanted to do something fun and different than the average reality star that always writes books about themselves, who they had sex with, just, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to actually give my fans something fun, a fiction book, let them inside my imagination, let them inside my head, as well as repping my culture, which is Louisiana Creole, and I always get the question, am I Haitian? No. And that's why in my book, I distinguish the difference between Louisiana Creole and Haitian Creole. Yeah. You know, so it's fun. And they also get my mom's very own recipes in my book as well. So it's just a lot of fun. My illustrations, my poetry, it's just a huge work of art. And this is honestly one of my best pieces of art that I've ever done in my life. Okay, so you also started in a movie. Yeah. Your first movie role. Did you have to audition, or was that something you just got off being Judy? That's okay. So my um, bookie email, somebody from Baltimore was like, I stole him, you know, my first, well, it's not her first movie, but I'm filming I'm producing my first movie. And I think Judy would be perfect for this role. And so um, I started filming it, and then I got a call to Baltimore, and ironically, I was perfect for the role. I played a character named Mika, and she was a setup girl. Not saying that I'm a setup girl or anything, but I'm such a creative person that I can actually like throw myself into any character I do. Um, as you can see on Bad Girls, I was a typical bad girl. Like I brought life to Voodoo Doll. I brought magic to you know the show. <laughs> so it's so easy for me to just I don't know how to be creative for things. I'm such a weirdo. I'm like Chris Brown, like seriously. <laughs> but it was so much fun filming it, and I'm so excited for my next call. That's ultimately one of my dreams. Okay, so um, there's rumors circling that you're involved with the feminine of the Bad Boys Club. Is that true? Well, me, Natalie, Sarah, and Flo um, had an audition for a Bad Boys Club. We had a huge mansion um, in Maryland. I mean, girl, we had everything. We had camera equipment, we had microphones, we had green screens, we had we had literally everything, camera lights, everything. Over 200 people came. Like, I mean, from everywhere, not just Maryland, not just the East Coast, but there were people who flew in from Los Angeles, California. Everything was perfect. Like, everything was going good, but the only thing that went wrong is, of course, Austin said no. Um... I love Oxygen so much, but you have to remember, Oxygen and Bad Girl Club, at the end of the day, it's a woman's network. Yeah. You know, like, they have Snap, they have Bad Girl Club, they have Face My Mom, like, it's all one sisterhood of hip hop. It's a woman's network. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but the logo that, you know, Natalie was trying to use for the show, it's way too close to the Bad Girl Club, and it was to the point that, like, legal teams got involved, lawyers got involved. It just couldn't work. Like, at all. It was, you know, it, it's just too much. Okay. So, as of now, that is not happening as of now. Okay. So, a lot of people don't know you actually rap. 
You have a couple free. I do. Yeah, you have a couple <laughs> free styles on your YouTube channel. Is music something you're looking into pursuing professionally, or that's just something you're doing for fun? I do it for fun because it comes so easily for me. Like I said, I do poetry. Like I write a lot of poetry. Um, so poetry is rhymes too, you know, and you know I just love rapping. Mm-hmm. Like. It, it's a, a release of stress for me when I get in the studio and a beat drops and I just, like, talk about how I feel. I, I really, really love music, and I would love to pursue, you know, something in it. To be honest, my dream job is working busy. To be on a float, be the Little Mermaid, <laughs> sing all the rhymes and the songs. Like, seriously, like, I'm just a very, very creative soul. But as of right now, uh, rapping is just a very, very... Um, creative things for me to do that releases my anxiety and stress and anger. Okay, all right. So, um, recently you just went to Baltimore where you fed the homeless, which I thought was a very good experience. You know, um, not a whole lot of people what, that's in the public eye give back. You hear them talk about it, but you never really see it. So, what yes, age you... I- decide to do that. Well, okay, you know, I actually um, touching on me feeding the homeless in Baltimore. A lot of people don't know, but I have uh, a charity at Larabita Children's Hospital in Chicago, Illinois, and it helps children with sickle cell disease. That's an ongoing charity. You can actually get to it from my website, so Um Last year, I gave away a turkey in Delaware. This year, I'm giving another turkey away um, in Orlando, Florida, and my event coming up on November 20th in the Magic City Mall Plaza. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done toy drives like last year. I've donated so many toys. That's literally what I do in life. Okay. Like, and it's just unfortunate that TMC and Boss are so quick to post up the crazy stuff that I do. But we'll never talk about the positive stuff I do because I wait. I do way more positive stuff than I do crazy. Yeah. But, you know, it's okay. I mean, that's what belongs on. They get paid to write mm-hmm. a 50 story. But yeah. whatever. Yeah, they do. Okay, so I lo- I'm a fan of lipsticks. I love lipsticks. That's just me. You have a lip cosmetic line that I absolutely yes. love. I love your different colors, especially um the red one. Thank you so much. It's called Red Bull. Yeah. Um, yes, I have my own lipstick line. It's called Dixon. Mm-hmm. Um, I have another um, line that's under Vixen lipstick. It's called the Capable Vixen. And every one of my lipsticks is named after something that has to do with me. Um, like Redbone, um, one is called Mermaid, one is called Crybaby, because we all know I'm a crybaby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just wanted to do something that was super fun. And ironically, you said your favorite color is the one is red. Yeah. Well, if everybody knows on season seven, I did the milk and cereal, so if you breakfast in bed, and I got beat up really, really bad. I had a bloody lip. The first time I ever wore red lipstick was when my friends on the show tried to cover my bloody lip. And the only color they could use was red. Yeah, that was my I fashion. I fell in love with it. And Tierra, right? I swear. It, it became like my signature trademark. And um, a lot of people don't know, but like my kissy face, when we kiss it, and mm-hmm. like... The red lips, the just black hair. I'm in love with old Hollywood glamour. Yeah. And Betty Boo. Oh, so it's okay. all like, comp- yeah, it's like all completely a part of like me and who I am as a person and as a brand. Okay, that's that's great. That's what makes your your line really unique and very different from all these other cosmetic lines out here. Yes, yes. Like I, you know, everything. Like if people don't realize, like I always do the leg up with me blowing the kisses because. I really, really love Betty Boop. <laughs> and um, I also love Marilyn Monroe. This is going to get a little deep. But people, have you seen the um, Lifetime movie about Marilyn Monroe? Yeah, I saw it. Okay. Well, I'm a Pisces, and I could—I know she was a Gemini, but I can relate to her in so many ways. Like, trying to separate duty in real life from duty of a bad girl club. Mind mm-hmm. you, I am the same person. But I can't always see the same crazy TV out of public that I'm on on television because ain't nobody, security ain't gonna bust out no more. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't get your feet up. <laughs> so I kind of understood what it was to, you know, to kind of, you know, be a character all the time. Mm-hmm. So I also stand on Marilyn Monroe a lot. And like I said, not only do I love Betty Boo, but I love old Hollywood. And she was like an icon, you know, in old Hollywood. 
So I just love that. I love the 50s. I love the business, all that. I hate this generation so much. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you're using your platform for something positive. Um, yeah. So is it harder to do more things in the industry uh, because you are part of Bad Grass Club? Like, do people not, you know, take you more serious because you were on something like Bad Grass Club? I'm actually a dinner right now. And the one thing my waitress said was she liked me from the show because I was real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I feel like what makes me different from a lot of bad girls is that they didn't go in there trying to, like, do anything but have fun. Mm-hmm. And it, it just so happened to turn out that everybody just couldn't stand me being happy and having fun. Like, nobody could ever bring me down. But I am a human, and like I said, I'm a crybaby. I'm a Pisces. I'm, I cry all the time at the drop of a dime. Oh, girl, yes. So, I, I know. I am, too. <laughs> yes. So when I, when I cry... I forgot that the cameras were there. Like, I just never even realized the cameras were there. That's why people saw me being angry, mad, happy, having fun. It was like, I, oh, and mind you, I was funny as hell. I was funny as that girl all the time. And it's crazy because I didn't even know I was so funny. I'm just being me. Mm-hmm. But I think I made watching that girl feel more enjoyable because I brought laughter into people's living room. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when I cry, people so sad. So they cry. Um, I gave hope to little kids who just bullied in school. Like, if Judy can stand up to all these people, so can I. You know, so I feel like I'm looked at a little differently than just a bad girl from the bad girl club. I feel like I'm looked at as a human being, you know? Yeah. So, I don't think it's hindered anything. I, I think it actually opened more doors for me. Okay. Well, I'm going to dig a little bit into your personal life. Yes. Are you single right now? You know what, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this is crazy. I've always been, I, for one, I love my gays. I love the gay community. I absolutely support everything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've never considered myself to be gay. Um, I've, like, we know. We, how many sex, how many boys have I had sex with on television? But we're not going to go on it. <laughs> but, you know, I've always been, you know, really straight. But during my, my parents' this, uh, demise or whatever, there was a girl in my life who was, like, literally always there. Like, the there to the toughest, the toughest stuff. Like, if I needed, like, some cardboard boxes to help, you know, back up the rest of my things, like, she had them, like, if I couldn't get out of bed one day because I was just so depressed, like, I just didn't want to eat or move, she would come over and dust the drop off, like, a ball of soup at my doorstep. Or whenever I wake up and want to run downstairs and grab it. It's just crazy. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I guess I'm bisexual now. Like, I definitely have feelings for, you know, this girl. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy. I, I, but I wouldn't say if we're in a relationship or not. Girl, I'm not going to fight with her every day. Right now, we've broken up. If you call me back tomorrow, we might be together. <laughs> okay, so it's safe to say that, you know, you and Matthew, and those who don't know who Matthew is, that's who you want love games yes. with. Some people know him as Dennis from College Hill, Atlanta. You yes. know, he's you know he's yes. um actually from South Carolina, Columbia. You know, I, but I know he's from uh, Columbia, South yeah. Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, people always ask, wasn't real and it was we actually dated for like two years afterwards after the show and we are actually still very very good friends to this day he actually came and visited my new house down here in Atlanta and everything okay. um what would ever go back to how it was who knows what the future holds but I do care about him as a person it's just a certain type of person that go with me and my spin personality <laughs> for two years but you know he's a good guy regardless of you know, his personal life and the situation. Ultimately, you know, he decides to do the best he can. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, and I love y'all together, by the way. And he really, I love him, girl. And he loves me, too. And I feel like that love will never, ever go away because whenever I call him, he's there. You know? Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, so will we be seeing more of you on Oxygen anytime soon? Or is that something you can't answer? Yes. You know, this is crazy. Um, the show that's airing right now, Fix My Mom. Yeah. Me and my mom were actually casted for that show. Sent out, guys, the producers loved us, everything. We were in the door. But unfortunately, you know, my mom passed. 
could have, we could have been a part of it. I, you know, I feel like the universe makes no mistake. Mm-hmm. And um, I still do get calls from Oxygen, and they just did a press release about all of uh, the, the old things I'm doing and everything. I'm still actually in contact with them, too. It's just depending on the next spinoff whenever that comes. Yeah, I feel like you should definitely get your own, you know, show, like kind of like Tanisha has. Everybody says that. Yeah. Like, yeah, so I, I would really it. watch that. Like, I, I, like, I would love it. Especially now, it's like seeing what I've been through and how I'm growing and coping. Like, this will actually so okay, real life that hit me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it will show me in a different light besides this piece of all the time in a house full of seven other girls. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, you all got to understand, getting your own show, mind you, me and Mom, it's our own show in LA. We were ready for it and everything. But it goes way more into having a show. They have to have the money to invest in it. They have to have the equipment. They have to have the cameras. They have to have the, the travel. And, you know, I love oxygen so much. But right now, the show is not doing too well with ratings. Yeah. Yes, because to be honest with you, I watched the last season, and it was just, it was just horrible to me. I was just like, what happened to the past previous seasons, you know? I know. I, I felt know. like Redemption I, 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 was the, the the last best one. And, but you know what? It could have been so much better. Yeah. But it's new producers. It's a new team. Um, things have just changed, you know? But I still love Oxygen. I still love the show. And I love Jenna Maria to support them with anything they do. And whenever I get that call, I will be there to support them 100%. Yes, girl. Try to do you a VH1, you know, get you one with love and hip-hop. <laughs> I know, but you know what, though? I'm so much more talented than just reality TV, and that's also why I moved to Atlanta. Um, to really further my acting career. Um, I feel like I have way more to offer people than just looking like a full on television, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no shade, though, no shade. But I, I do love reality TV, and I will definitely be back. Okay, so what's next for you in general? I know you got your book. You're still promoting that hard. What's, what do yes. you have playing next? I actually got cast into an MTV show. Um, I can't talk too much about it, of course, due to contract. But I will be on an MTV show. Okay. So how true are these rumors um, about Empire? Can you talk about that? Because I heard something about um, Empire. I, I was on set with Empire. I have the uh, pictures up on my page. You know, Empire films in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Mm-hmm. I made an appearance on Fox News 29 in Philadelphia. And I was so funny and did such a good job that those producers told me they have a new show filming right now on Empire and they think that I should go to the set. My only problem was, why am I standing here for 12 hours in heels to be an extra and get paid absolutely nothing when I already have a long resume? Yeah. I'm not even speaking. I wouldn't even get an acting credit. You don't get a credit if you're not speaking. You know what I'm saying? So it's just what? To be seen? No. No. And she didn't get an acting credit either. Um, you know, it's just I'm at the point in my life where I actually was in a movie that has an acting credit that sold them Best Buy and Target and stuff. It's just like, I don't necessarily need this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If I'm not even going to get paid or a credit. Like, it's for me right now, it's not just being seen or attention. It's about my career. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So, and my team are on both as you know, and yes, a lot of stuff as well. Okay, so let's um, all your fans know how they can reach you for those who don't know. <laughs> yes, y'all can follow me at Judy J Crazy on Twitter. Y'all can follow me um, at Miss Judy J on Instagram. And, um,. Yes, and I appreciate you for that. And I want to thank you so much for letting me do this interview with you. And I love you so, so, so much. And next time I come to Columbia, usually I get folks like Capriosa. Oh, yeah, okay. So you have to come out and party with me, and I got a bottle for you and everything. I definitely will. Or when I come to Atlanta, because I definitely will be coming to Atlanta a whole lot more. Okay. Oh, my God, girl, call me. I will take you anywhere you need to go. I definitely will do that.
Turn up. I love you so much. I love y'all. All right. Thank you. This is um, Let's Talk Hip Hop, and we just had Judy from Bad Girls Club.